What's up, Wildlings? Colin Stuckert here, founder of Wild Foods Co. and TheAncestralMind.com in the Wild Studio here in Austin, Texas. And today's video is very simple, okay? But complex at the same time. Why are you afraid? Now, how could I tell you that you're afraid, right? Well, we're all afraid of some things. This is a survival mechanism, and it's explained by our biology, which we're gonna get into. We're gonna get into why you are afraid to do simple things, like maybe it's being a little bit more vulnerable to someone, telling somebody you like them, maybe posting a picture on, on social media, you don't know if it's gonna get a lot of likes. All these social situations where you take these perceived risks, why are they so hard to us, right? Why does our body perceive them as a threat to our survival? Today's video, we're gonna cover why that is, and we're gonna cover some things you can do to combat it and get better at just foregoing that fear, getting more used to that fear, and turning it into actually a strength, and, and then in your life, seeking out things you're afraid of, because usually, hidden under those rocks is development and how you reach your goals. The reason why we all humans, as animals, universally are afraid of things that would embarrass us, that are risks in front of other humans, is because of, one, our biology, okay? So our evolutionary past. Humans, homo sapiens, evolved in the wild and moved to the top of the food chain because we were able to work together. Now, what that looks like, though, in the wild is you have your small tribe, maybe it's 20 people, maybe it's 30 people, and you basically live with these people your entire life. If for whatever, whatever reason you got kicked out of that tribe, it would have been a death sentence, okay? Then you also needed to procreate, so you needed to have a mate. And if within that tribe you were to do things and people maybe would make fun of you, they would gossip about you, or you got on the bad side of other people in the tribe, well, they used things like shaming and gossip to kind of keep people in check, right? Because you wouldn't want people to be gossiping about you. You wouldn't want to, people to be spreading ill will about you. Why? Because it would lower the chances you would be able to find a mate. If you had 20 people in a tribe and you're a social pariah, right? Nobody likes you or, or no females like you, you're not gonna find a mate for a man, for example. Anything that we would have done, and now even what we do today, that is a risk socially, meaning if we are to do things that we think people will condemn us for or shame us for, or we will have you know, negative press for, we are very much have resistance to those things because of that risk. Now, it, it served a purpose. It kind of kept us in check and it helped the group survive. You wouldn't want any one person to rise up in status. And you wouldn't want one person that would steal, lie, cheat, or not give food back when you gave him food or her food last week. Like there was a lot of these ideas like reciprocity, things like that, that basically kept the group surviving. And so there are very good reasons why we are this way. Except today, in our modern world, with the massive amount of strangers around us and things like social media, these are ill-suited to being productive today. To be successful today, you're going to do things, say things, and take a lot of risks, whether financially, whether personally, and that is how you're going to find success. Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, Every successful person ever that's ever had an idea, Steve Jobs, they were all told they were crazy. They were all told it's never gonna work. They, they had just tons and tons of people around them wishing, hoping that they will fail, even trying to make them fail, even people trying to actively sabotage them. And again, this is kind of a byproduct of our human nature. We don't really like people seeing people rise up. It's, it's, it's kind of a strange thing, but that's a topic for another day. For those of you that want to be successful today, Generally, you have to be going out there taking risks. Now, let's say that's business. You're gonna risk money. You're gonna risk uh, having an idea or making statements or doing things that maybe the public isn't ready for or maybe the market isn't ready for. And these are gonna be risks because if you fail, you will not only lose money or maybe lose other people's money, right? But you will also get the shame or, or have the people that say, I told you so, that will come along with that. What you find though is the true visionaries and the, and the true entrepreneurs they become numb to those kind of external risks, right? Obviously, nobody wants to lose money, but sometimes that's part of doing business. You have to throw out experiments, you have to do tests, and you're gonna lose money along the way, right? But the, the, the best entrepreneurs, the, the best visionaries, they get to a point where they hear no, or you can, or you're crazy so much that they, like in my example, and I'm not, you know, world-class entrepreneur or anything like that, but I, I am a successful business owner and I've been able to do a lot of things. When people tell me I can't do something or when they try to shame me or tell, tell me I told you so, I take it as fuel. 
right? Even posting on YouTube now, you'll have videos, even something like this, right? Where people will leave negative comments. Maybe I talk too fast or I use my hands too much or whatever nonsense that people come up with as a way to basically project their insecurities and as a way to try to level the playing field, right? People don't want to see other people doing things. They want to try to bring them down to their level to make things equal. And this is again, biology. I understand why they do it. But for you, for the person that wants to be successful and get out there and change the world, make a difference and do your own thing, you have to ignore that. But also what I highly recommend is use it as fuel. Not in a way to where like you have an unhealthy relationship with success and you're, you're just trying to be successful so you can buy a, a, a fancy car and you know show those kids in high school that bullied you that you're important. You need to have a healthy relationship with these type of things. But you need to understand, first of all, why your biology keeps you afraid. It keeps you afraid of taking risks. It keeps you afraid of doing things in front of large groups of people. Okay, so that's the number one reason why. It was for group survival, our ancestors, figured out through mother nature, through programming, through millions of years of evolution, that group survival is how we were gonna to move to the top of the food chain. And so we had to do things as a species, we had to build habits that kept the group surviving. Not the individual, the group. Today though, you know, you're on your own for the most part. You'll even find friends and family, a lot of times, even people you perceive as in your group, they will not wanna see you personally move up and be successful or eat better or whatever. And so in those, in those instances, just like in instances with strangers or on social media, you have to be willing to grit your teeth, bite your lip, and just commit to what you believe and what you want, all right? Now let's, let's talk about some strategies on how to actually do that. Why is your biology? Obviously safety is tied to that. You know, there's actual physical safety that we need to be afraid of certain things. We need to be afraid of the unknown, dark places, right? Things like this because there is physical risk here. Today's video, it's not about that. I don't want you to take physical risks if you don't have to. You should always be vigilant. In fact, I'll probably do a video on how you should be extra vigilant nowadays because a lot of times people are walking around with their phone and you know, there's risk of someone running into you or when you're driving, you should, you should, no matter how good of a driver you are, you should not trust the other drivers on the road. So again, topic for another day. Today's about how you take those non-physical risks, right? The social risks, the risks of a business, the risk of putting yourself out there, the risk in your, your relationships, telling somebody how you feel about them. For a lot of people, that's a huge risk because it carries the risk of rejection. And again, well, you know what? We might as well cover that, right? So why do we have so many risks in our love lives? Why do we feel like it's so hard to tell people how we feel about them and to take those risks in you know interpersonal relationships. Well, it goes very much again to number one, the biology. If you were to, again, be in that group, visualize yourself in that group of 20, 30, 40 people, limited pool of people to choose from. If you were to happen to go up to one of the females in the tribe and she would reject you, maybe she even laughed at you, maybe she thought you were crazy for even thinking that she would sleep with you or whatever it is she would then gossip and tell the other women in the tribe. And then you'd be at a very major risk of having no mates whatsoever. This is a really big deal back then. Like we didn't have Tinder or online dating and you couldn't just move to the next city. I mean, you literally lived with the same people your entire lives, okay? So there was a major risk in putting yourself out there to someone of the opposite sex. And obviously I'm talking more about men in this instance, women, it's not the same dynamic or whatever. But you know, if a woman, for example, was somehow branded as like, uh, maybe maybe witchcraft or possessed or, or something like that, then it could be something very similar. You know, she would be ostracized from the group. She would be ostracized as a mate, even if she happened to stay in the group. There are risks here to kind of having negative press around you. And that is why personally, we take this stuff so seriously and we're so afraid of it. Safety and biology, those are the reasons why. Now, modern world, what do we do about it? How can we actually break free from this? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not easy. It doesn't happen overnight and there's no magic pill, but there is a way. And with everything, it's a process, a little bit at a time, tiny micro steps forward is how you break free from this. And so I'm gonna give you a couple examples of how to actually do that. And then you'll find your own ways in your own life to do that, okay? Now, first of all, the, the number one thing that you should try to get down is being honest and open. Make that who you are. If you have feedback for something at work, your wife, your, your husband, your mom, your dad, whatever, like they're wearing something, they have something on their face, like just tell people, be honest with them. Be like, you know, are you sure you wanna wear that? Like, I don't know, it looks kind of this or whatever. Some people sometimes, you might hurt feelings here and there, but fundamentally, if it's from the heart, if you're not doing it to be funny or criticized or sarcastic, if you're just trying to help people by providing what you perceive as honest feedback, that is going to go a long way for you and for other people. That's more of a bigger idea, it's, it's, it's more of a personality thing, but get in the habit of saying what you want, saying what you mean, and just being straightforward. Don't beat around the bush, don't play nice, just don't. That's number one, okay? Now, actual things to do. Here's something I like a lot. This, this is called the uh, coffee 
experiment or practice or whatever. So coffee, you go, you go get coffee or it could be juice or anything. And you go up to the register and you go to order and you, you say, can I get 10% off? They might, you know, the, the response will range from why or huh? Or they'll just look at you or sure. And if they ask you why, you say, yeah, you know, I just feel like I want 10% off. I shop here a lot. Or it's my birthday. Or, you know, you could make an excuse, but I think it's even more powerful if you just say, I think I deserve it or I want it. What is wrong with that? Why is that so socially awkward for us to, to go up to a business and ask for 10%, I'll ask for a discount, right? Without a coupon and without a reason. Maybe to get started, come up with the reason, but eventually get to the point where you literally just ask right? You don't have a reason. And when they say no, or I can't or whatever, you just shrug and say, cool, you know, or thanks for trying. It's so powerful. But these, these subtle things, these little things you do in your daily life are how you practice to get rid and overcome the biology and safety aspect. Okay. This is your default biology, safety. We're all animals. We're humans, but through conditioning, you can overcome them. But if you don't practice, if you don't condition, you will default to your base. It's like when you're single. After, let's say you were just in a relationship and you're single and you like forgot how to date. A lot of times people don't forget how to date. They forget how to be confident enough or carefree enough or aggressive enough or whatever you need enough to date because they, they fell into the comfortability of being in a relationship. And so they're not used to going out. They're not used to small talk. They're not used to banter. They're not used to expressing you know, their direct interest in somebody. Like you lose those things because you're in a relationship for so long, you get comfortable. You result to your base of biology and safety. Coffee, number one, okay? It could be juice, drink, whatever. Ask for a discount. Here's another one, and I see this all the time, right? Food. So at restaurants, you know how it is. You get something that's not up to your standards, and you're like, oh, I should send it back, but no, it's fine. And what I've noticed is when that comes up and people around me have their kind of insecurity around it or makes them nervous, they're like, oh no, just don't, don't do it or whatever. And I'm just like, no, are you kidding me? It's not good enough. I'm gonna send it back. It's overdone. I'm gonna send it back. I just don't like it. I'm gonna send it back. And you don't want, you should not be rude to the waiter. Do not be rude to the waiter. They did not make your food. Politely, calmly, whatever. You don't have to be extra nice either. I'm just like, you know, hey, it's just not working out for me. It's overdone. Can you, can you send it back? Can you have send me a new one, right? Or you know what? I'm not really feeling this. I don't want another one. Can you just take it off the bill? Like that's it. It's so easy, but if you're out of that practice, if you don't do it, it's going to be hard. You don't want to offend people. You don't want the awkwardness, but when you do it more and more, you realize that awkward has no power over you. And a lot of things in life can be awkward. Yeah, they can be awkward, but really it's only if you dwell on it and get all nervous and flustered about it, that it even matters. It might be awkward for them, but that's good. That's them. That's their thing. They got to figure it out. And if anything, you're doing them, you're doing them a service, help them get through it, get over it. Most things in life don't freaking matter. When you have food and you don't like it and you're not happy, always take it as an opportunity to send it back. Always, okay? Coffee, even food, restaurants, whatever, ask for a discount. It's like, you actually, you go to a restaurant, you sit down, you're like, you know, we had a 30 minute wait and they told it was 15. Can you just like get me 10% off? Right? So powerful, okay? Do I got a stain on my shirt? Looks like I got a stain. Oh, it's like one of those oil stains you can't even see. I literally can't see from this angle, but you can see it from there. Okay, coffee, food. Uh, maybe this, example, right? Wear, shirt, wear stains around proudly, who cares? Whatever. Maybe stain your shirt and walk around all day with it as practice to break yourself free of being attached to others' expectations and perceptions because their opinions don't fucking matter, all right? And let's end the video with some rant. Well, I'll give you one more. So coffee, we got food. Uh, let's just go with like relationships. Now there's two things here. There's two things in relationships. One, if you're dating and two, your family members, your already relationship, whatever. The second one, the relationships you already have. Just be honest and say what you mean and ask for what you want. So much of people go through life expecting the people around them to read their freaking mind. And then they get pissed off or upset or whatever or insecure when the person doesn't read their freaking mind. Say what you mean. When someone tells you what they mean, don't ask them why, 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 or are you sure, whatever. Like build a foundation of, of trust and straightforwardness. I don't like being questioned multiple times. And, but at the same time, I don't, I will say what I mean. I won't say, oh no, I'm fine. And I'm really not. I'll say either 
I'll tell you later, or I just need a moment, or I don't want to talk about it and I'll get over it. And that's fine too. I'm saying that not passive aggressively. I'm saying it because I'm honest. And that's another thing. Don't be passive aggressive. Don't establish these really poor forms of communication in your relationships because it's going to ruin your freaking life. All right, it's gonna ruin your relationships. The more honest, straightforward, and direct you can be, the better. At times I come off harsh, right? But at least you know where, you f where I fucking stand. And for most people, it's a breath of fresh air and it's going to only make you all better. Now, in your dating relationships. Now, this is obviously maybe advice more for guys, but in fact, it's also for girls. We did a podcast here the other day with Ebony of uncagecollective.com and she was talking about an instance where she was out and about, a guy came up to her, you know, he was kind of a good looking guy, whatever. They started talking a little bit and about time for him to leave or her leave, he said, well, you know, why don't we grab lunch sometime? And she's like, oh yeah, you know, thanks for the offer, but I'm not interested. And she was just being straight, being honest. She wasn't being rude. And the, and the guy was like, what do you mean? You, you have a boyfriend, you don't want to tell me? And she's like, no, I don't have a boyfriend. I'm just, I'm not interested. Like no big deal, not interested. And the guy like freaked out, right? He, his ego couldn't comprehend the fact that maybe she wasn't interested in him, right? She wasn't lying. She wasn't making it up because she had a boyfriend. She was just, I'm just not interested. I just don't really want to get lunch with you or talk to you or whatever. No big deal, right? How many billions of people on the planet are we not going to have lunch with tomorrow? And we're not upset about it, right? His ego couldn't accept it though. That's kind of a, not a great example of how you should be general. And I guess maybe it is because really the reason he thought that is because so few women are willing to be honest and just say that because they don't, they, they don't want to hurt feelings. But what they're doing by doing that, what you're doing ladies, is you're creating these guys that can never get the real feedback they need. And so they get these egos and they just become aggressive and jerks and no one's benefit, no one's better for it, right? Just be honest. Saying like, no, I'm just not interested or, I, or I'm not dating now or whatever. Like, you know, if you want to put a little spin on it, it's fine. But fundamentally, we should be more concerned with giving people the honest feedback so they can get better than we should be about trying to prevent them maybe having their feelings hurt. Because that is that that coddling bullshit is why we have this now social justice warrior culture we have. We have this, we have men not being able to be men. We have women complaining about not being able to find the real men. And like it's it's all interrelated. It's all a fault of everyone. It's the internet's fault, it's fucking Twitter's fault. It's it's all of our faults. In the, in your relationships, men or women, be direct and honest. Say, you know what? I think you're attractive. I'm, I'm really interested in you. I'd like to have dinner with you. Not just like, not you know, guys, don't just try to like slide into it, but like say that. Tell them you're sexually interested or interested or whatever you want to say it. Admit that you're attracted to them. Admit that you think they're beautiful or cute or whatever. And say, you know, I'd, I'd love to have dinner with you. Not hard. And then women, if, it, if, if you're not interested, you simply say, you know what? I'm just not interested. I, I really appreciate the offer though. You can make an excuse if you want. I'm not dating right now, whatever. Don't Just don't lie and be honest and straightforward. And maybe you could have a good conversation about that. Maybe the guy could be like, okay, that's cool, you know? Well, to help me, what tips would you give me, right? Because I want to get better for the next time. That that would be a fun conversation. You know how few people can do that though because everyone's ego's all tied up in dolls bullshit? <laughs> a little bit rambly, I know, but fundamentally, we're all afraid to take those social risks from biology, from our past. We can overcome that if we practice, okay? That's, those are the two things to, to, to first, from this video, take away. Whatever you choose on how to overcome it is gonna be up to you. I would highly recommend all kinds of things. In fact, another really good one before we go, tell your boss the truth, how you feel, okay? And ask for the raise if you think you deserve it. Simple as that. If you wanna work from home once a week, you think you can value, you can do that and you can deliver that value, ask to do it. Say, I'll try it for a month. If it doesn't work out, I'll come back into work. If you feel like you need to raise, say, I, I, I'm ready for a raise if I've earned it. And if not now, then let's get on a path for getting there. And I promise you, as someone who's employed hundreds of employees myself, that candor and that openness is so much appreciated because at least I know where you're at. I don't have to worry about whether you're happy or not or whether I'm this or that or whatever. Like there's so much confusion around how bosses should, should act towards employees because they all most of the time keep their stuff to themselves. I have no idea what they're thinking. I have no idea what they want. I don't know if they want to work more or less. I don't know if they do this or that. You got to tell me, <laughs> tell your boss, tell your coworkers, tell people what to expect from you, what you want, who you are. The more honest and direct you can be, the better you're going to be and the better the fucking world is going to be and the future of humanity. Now, I know it seems like a micro problem, but it's not. It's actually a macro topic. It's something that we can all get better at. My name is Colin Suckert. I approve this message. Make sure you like and subscribe for more videos from the ancestral perspective. 
Make sure you hop on our podcast, The Ancestral Mind. You can find it anywhere you can find podcasts. And again, thanks for watching.